Tonya Yuhas and I am the director of the Chevron program at Global Exchange. We have um, an excellent um, lineup of speakers who will be joining us today. Um, after I speak will be Greg Harris, who is the senior scientist with Communities for a Better Environment. Next will be Torm, I'm going to pronounce your name incorrectly, Torm Namprasit, who is the senior organizer um, for Asian Pacific Environmental Network. Next speaking will be the mayor of Richmond, Gail McLaughlin. Uh, and finally, we'll have Ananda Lee Tan, who is with the, um, on the Senior Council for the Mobilization for Climate Justice and is the U.S. Campaign Director of the Global Alliance for Incinerator Alternatives. Um, we are here to look at the Chevron Corporation on the road to the Global Climate Talks in Copenhagen. For the first time in 2009, Seven of the ten largest corporations in the world were oil companies. Chevron, riding on its highest profits and highest revenues in its history, on $260 billion in revenues, moved into the top five slot for the first time as the fifth largest corporation in the world. Chevron's revenues have increased by 2,100% just since 2001. They are one of the wealthiest entities the world has ever known. Chevron has been using its wealth, unfortunately, to guide public policy at the international, national, and local level to the great detriment, in particular, of the communities that live and must experience most directly its exploration, its production, the transport of its products, the refining of its products, the selling of its products, and the disposal of its products. What is unique around Chevron, however, is the network of those communities, the Chevron affected communities and their allies, who have joined together to support each other and to demand real policy changes. Now, any of you that are residents of California are residents of a Chevron affected community. Chevron is the largest corporation in California. It is the most politically dominant. It has used that weight to many uh, problematic turns, most recently as we face the most daunting crisis in our budget history, Chevron has led the fight to keep a very simple tax, a severance tax on oil, out of the game. California is the third largest oil producing state in the country where we are the only major oil producing state that does not tax oil when it is severed out of the ground. That is a tax that could bring in a billion dollars a year annually into the California budget, save children whose health insurance is being cut, save HIV and AIDS patients whose services are being cut, save teacher salaries, save worker salaries, and instead Chevron is blocking the imposition of that tax. Chevron is blocking the closing of corporate loopholes. Chevron is blocking the imposition of increasing corporate taxation more broadly all across the state and making us suffer uh, and not standing up um, and, and uh, offering its help in this time of need. Also, if you live in the Bay Area, you are a major uh, member of the Chevron affected communities as Chevron operates one of its oldest most polluting refineries right here in the Bay Area. The Chevron Richmond Refinery is the largest industrial polluter in the Bay Area. It is in significant long compliance for uh, air, air standards, air safety standards, and now Chevron wants to refine heavier, dirtier recruit in Richmond that you will hear from Greg Karras will increase the uh, greenhouse gas emissions from the refinery by two to three times. But the community here is taking a stand and has taken a stand has taken a stand in a measure that will save the climate for all of us. 
and has taken a stand that will lead us into our demands, which is that corporations should be, that Chevron should be capping its crude here in Richmond, and all corporations should be out of the critical, critical climate negotiations coming up in Copenhagen this December. We are a collection of more than 30 organizations that are part of the Mobilization for Climate Justice, and we are going to be um, active on the streets in Richmond this Saturday. We're next going to hear from Greg Karras, who's going to tell us more of the details of what's happening in the fight in Richmond. Thank you.